Oh, so my story started, I was married. Um, I was with my partner for six years and we're married for one year and everything came crashing. So, um, so throughout the whole um, seven years we were together, we actually never consummated our marriage. Um, when I met him, of course, I told him I wanted to wait till I, you know, till we get married and all that. And um, while throughout our dating, we never tried, you know, he respected that. Um, once, once we got married and we tried, I think we tried like when, um, when we, when we got engaged, we tried. And I noticed that it was kind of, I will always like tense up, like, you know, I will always never, it would never, nothing would ever go through. So I was like something, but I didn't think there was something wrong with me. It was when I was like, okay, it's time for me to go start doing my, um, my join exam. And I'm a nurse, I'm a nurse practitioner. So I know that, okay, it's time for me to go um, get, you know, do my GI and my PAPS and all that. So when I went for my first one, and it was a total mess. Like I couldn't stay still. I jumped up. Like the the, the doctor was so frightened. She was so scared. Like she's like, "What is what's wrong?" She's like, "Do you have a boyfriend?" I was like, "Yes, I'm I'm engaged." And she's like, "Oh, that that I need to go home and drink some wine." Um, I need to relax. She's like, have you guys had sex? I'm like, I'm waiting till we get married. She's like, oh, it's okay. Just, you know, drink some wine. Um, you know, you need to relax more. She's like, you know, don't worry. You know what? I'll wait till you guys get married. You have sex and then you could come back. That's what she told me. So I, I, so I was like, okay, no problem. Once we have sex, I'll come back and I'll, you know, get the pap done and all that. We got married. The night of our wedding, we were tired. So it was an African wedding. So you can imagine where <laughs> we, we passed out. So we went on our honeymoon and that was where the whole, everything came crashing down. He couldn't, he couldn't even get in there and he was frustrated, we're fighting, you know. I was crying the whole time. We came back, we kept trying. And that's when we started having like serious issues. I mean, there were already issues in our marriage but that just made um, everything worse. and. Coming from an African background, he was already talking to his family and they was like, oh, maybe, you know, voodoo, you know, you're African, you know, she probably has a spirit husband that is not letting my son, you know, get in there. She's probably has, they, they actually were saying I should go talk to our pastor to do like deliverance. And I'm serious, like, I'm, I can't, I kid you not. You know, we, we went to our pastor, he prayed, he's like, I'm gonna refer you to a doctor and all of that. And we never went to that doctor. We, could, we couldn't even figure out what it was. And then I went back to another um, doctor for like, you know, another G try and do my pap. And the same thing happened. And she's like, this is not, she couldn't figure out what it was. She was like, I don't know what it was. And I feel like I'm hurting you. I don't want to just stick the, uh, push the jab you in with a speculum. And she's like, you know what? Maybe you should try and have sex first and come. I was like, how come nobody could tell me what's going on? Like, why can't I? She asked me, can you use a tampon? No. Can you put your, I couldn't even put my finger in there. Anytime my ex-husband would try to like penetrate me, it would never, nothing would happen. So to cut long story short, we separated. It got really bad. We separated. Um, I had to move out. Um, I was alone. I was going through like depression. I was so I was going through a lot then and I was still in denial. I was like, maybe because I'm not, I don't love this guy because, you know, we're going through a lot. Maybe there's something um, going on that, you know, so I was still in denial that there was something wrong with me. And then, you know, I was alone and I started dating. I met this other guy and, you know, you're going through a lot, going through a divorce and all that, you know, you just look for the next person to put that pain on. And, you know, I met this nice guy who, you know, he was good to me and then it was time to have sex. And I was crazy about him. Like it was different. He was different from, you know, what I was used to, like the way my ex-husband used to treat me. And when it was time to have sex, the same thing happened. And he was like, we'll try again, the same thing, nothing. And he's like, listen, Adana, you need to figure out. Cause I opened up to him and he's like, you need to go and find out what's wrong. Like something is not right. And then that was, that was when it clicked to me that, yeah, something is definitely not right with me. I have to go take care of this. So I was just in my room that, that day and I was just like crying. I was just like asking God, like, why are you punishing me? You know, what's going on? And I was just Googling. I was just like Googling stuff. And then something just directed me to YouTube and it came up women's, um, therapy you know and I clicked on the video and there was this black girl in the video 
who was like talking about her experience. I think she was there with her mom. And I was screaming. I was like, oh my God, this is me right here. <laughs> she was, everything she mentioned was everything I was going through. I was like crying and screaming. It was that, and I looked at, I quickly Googled the center and I live in New York, I live in the Bronx. So I was like, oh my God, it's so late to call. I didn't sleep the whole night. I literally stayed up till, I think they opened at 9 a.m. And I called and the sweetest lady picked up the phone. And she's like, we, we're going to take you in. It's okay. We're going to take you. you you're good. We, we got this. You, you know, she gave, she assured me. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. I was like, can I come there alone? Like, I don't have anybody. She's like, it's fine. You could come and we, we scheduled. And I actually went with one of my very close friends for the first um, consult. And I went there and when I went there, I saw the posters and I was like, wow. And it was pretty, it was a pretty, it was a, you know, good commute for me from the Bronx. But I was like, listen, I have to get this done. And um, and I met the most amazing women that just transformed my whole life. And they just held my hand throughout the whole process. And the first visit I went with my friend and I thought that, cause I was, I, I think I saw the couples there, you know, everybody was there with the, you know, their partners. And I was, I kind of felt alone because I was, you know, I was there with a friend of mine and I'm like, is this how it's gonna be? Like, I'm gonna be here. But my friend could only come with me that same day. But I'm telling you that, after that first, and my friend wasn't in the room with me, but after that first visit, I just got the assurance that Adana, you could do this. And I made, I went on that visit by myself for the, until I was done. And I started, it's so funny because I started to like, just, I don't know how to describe it, but I started recording myself. Like, let's say the day I have like my treatments, I would just pull out my phone. I was, I'm walking to the train. I'm like, hey guys, this is Adana. We're going to kick vaginismus, but we're going to do this. <laughs> like I was just boosting myself. And, you know, so that was when I first, the first bit I heard any, you know, about vaginismus. I never knew anything, even as a nurse, but I never, even the doctors I met, nobody ever knew anything about it. And, you know, they gave me so much, um, they gave me that confidence that, listen, you're going to, we're going to get, like, they kept telling me, showing me that this is going to work. And I thought my case was like, I was so worried because I'm like, I'm going through a divorce right now. It's really, really bad. Like that was affecting me emotionally, plus this whole thing. And, you know, like, I mean, I want to have kids. I can't do my path. I was worried, you know, and I'm, I'm alone and, you know, but they just found a way to reassure me that it's going to be okay. Like you're in good hands and we got you. And believe it or not, I, well, I was one of the patients that was placed in Xanax because my, my anxiety was... <laughs> through my anxiety was just a hot mess <laughs> you know so and then they taught me how to use the um do the homeworks and you know go home and I would do and I was able to open up to my sister my mom like my parents are actually back home in Nigeria so I was able to open up to my mom and my sister my sister is here and I told them about what's going on and they were crying with me on the phone They're like oh my god so this is what is wrong with my mom was so emotional she's like there's nothing wrong with her daughter like you know she was so worried for me even I was so worried for my sister because then she was planning on getting married and, and my sister wanted to wait till she get married and I was like no I want you to just have sex now I want to be sure that you don't have this problem you know I was so worried for her you know so that was a big part like she's like you know she too was nervous too um but you know, everyone, my parents were like, even my dad, like I had to open up to him and he was like, wow, like, so there's nothing wrong with my daughter. There's nothing spiritually wrong with her. Like, you know, like everybody was just like, wow. Like, so I was telling them, you know, my progress. I always tell my sister, you know, cause my, I and my sister were very close. I always tell her, show her what I'm doing and all that. And the day I got my socks, oh my God. It was like, the, <laughs> you know, it was, I was so happy and to cut story short, I graduated and it just happened that the same time I graduated, I finished my nurse because I was going through a whole lot during that period. I was in school, finishing my master's program. I almost like just gave up and just, I'll go to class crying. Like it was just a whole lot of stuff going on. So I needed the, 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 the doctors that became like family, they became like my therapy. It was not just like going there for your, your treatment. It became like my therapy. Because every time I go there, I will always open up. I will always cry. I always talk to them about it. They always ask me, who are you dating now? Who are you seeing now? Dad, what are you doing? It was, I was always looking forward to going there. And I was getting my healing from there too. 
you know, so I finished the program. I graduated that week with my nurse, nurse practitioner um, um, program. And I, I look at it like I graduated twice. I was like, I graduated from my nurse practitioner program and I graduated from my bachelor's nurse program. And then I went for my first um, um, PAP and everything worked out. So I cried so much after it was done. And then the tampons, oh my God, you won't believe that even till today, whenever I use a tampon, I still do like a little dance. Like <laughs> even shopping for tampons, like whenever I go to the store to buy tampons, I always do this dance. I'm like, oh my God, I'm buying tampons. Like I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh, I'm getting this today. This is, yep, this is my, I'm like, yep, I'm gonna get regular, super, yeah. We're not up to, so, yeah, you know, like, those little things still make me so happy. Like I could, I feel like a woman. Like when my friends then used to talk about sex and I used to like, what are they talking? Like I, 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 I just couldn't, I never told anyone about this. No, none of my close friends, just my family. Like I was so ashamed to like, even because I'm like, who, who? Especially being Af like African, like people are going to look at you like something wrong with you. Like this was something that we could not tell anyone. Like I couldn't open up to anyone, no one at all. So when everybody's talking about sex, I'm like, um, oh, so let me get to the best part. So after the program, <laughs> so, you know, that was when you're gonna like test it out, right? So <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, you know, I wrote Dr. Zizia was like, Adana, take your time. Don't, 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 listen, don't go out there and start going crazy. Just find someone you care about. Cause I was so worried. I was like, I'm not seeing anyone right now. You know, um, how do I know this is going to work? She's like, you're going to be fine. Like, if anything happens, you could always come back. I was so worried. So it took me like seven, eight months. And I started dating this guy. And even though we're not together right now, but I met this guy and I kind of opened up to him and then boom, we had sex. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> it happened. And, you know, the first time, you know, of course, it was kind of uncomfortable and stuff, but there was no pain. Um, it was just like, a different kind of feeling but now fast forward this was in 2018 fast forward to now the girl is having amazing sex <laughs> so you know I'm very comfortable doing you know that was another thing so I was like oh my god like I'm not as experienced you know you know I'm not you know I hear my girlfriends talk about things they do in the bedroom I'm like oh my god like I'm even when the guy I said it in I was like listen I'm not a pro in this so you're gonna just take it easy with me <laughs> but now I'm like I could say I'm a pro right now because I pretty much <laughs> I <laughs> I own my sexuality now you know and thanks to them and it's it's been beautiful from here you know I mean do I wish, I wish I was married. I wish I had kids, but listen, what I have right now, it's, it's more than anything. The peace of mind, the feeling that I feel like a woman, like I feel, I feel like I've arrived, like a new part of me just came out. Like, I feel like I was like, the new Adana came out. Once I found that, like, wow, I could, I could do whatever I'm ready. Like there's nothing else I can, you know, that I can um, overcome anymore, you know, so. Yeah, that's my story. 